I'm Dr. Susan Gray. I've been the medical director at the Loveless Women's Hospital Neonatal Intensive Care Unit for the past 15 years. My husband and I have had the pleasure to build the Loveless Women's Hospital NICU from the ground up. And our NICU offers comprehensive care that supports babies as young as 23 weeks gestation. Today we're going to talk about opioid withdrawal syndrome. This is something we have seen steadily increase within our NICU and across the state. What is NAS? NAS stands for Neonatal Abstinence Syndrome. And this occurs when babies are exposed to a variety of substances during pregnancy. Neonatal Opioid Withdrawal Syndrome is specific for opioid medications. And that can be any pain medication, oxycodone, Percocet, um, methadone, buprenorphine, suboxone, and heroin. It's very important for mothers not to stop taking these medications while they're pregnant and to be sure to seek prenatal care. What are the statistics of NAS? Unfortunately, across the country, they've gone up tremendously over the last 10 years. 2010 to 2017, all but two states have seen an increase in the incidence of NAS, and those two states are Nebraska and Vermont. Incidence ranges from three of a thousand live births in Nebraska to 53 per 1,000 live births in West Virginia. New Mexico kind of falls in the middle. The incidence in New Mexico has risen 324% from 2008 to 2017, and it's now about 14 per 1,000 live births. What does NAS look like in a baby? There are several different things that we look for. One is central nervous system dysfunction, and that can be tremors, high-pitched crying, inability to be consoled, even seizures. There's also a lot of gastrointestinal symptoms as in vomiting, diarrhea, being unable to eat, using so much energy that they're not growing well. And babies can also have increased respiratory rate, they can sweat. Those are the things that we look for. How do we manage the babies at Lovell Swimmers Hospital? In an ideal situation, we keep the baby with the mother and we implement non-pharmacologic measures first. That includes anything that will soothe the baby, being held skin to skin, rocking, uh, being in an infant seat, uh, being in a quiet environment, feeding on demand so babies don't get too hungry. If those things do not work, then they may need medication. Families also need to be supported with social support and connection to the outside community support for when this baby goes home. How do we determine the next step? So our goal is for the baby to be able to eat and to grow, to be able to be consoled and to be able to sleep. Uh, we use a modified Finnegan scoring, which is a multi uh, scoring system. And it looks at the central nervous system symptoms, the GI symptoms, sweating, nasal stuffiness, all those sorts of things. We want to do appropriate care for the baby, and we always stress the non-pharmacologic steps first, and those continue even if a baby requires medication. Get a history from the mother so we um, hopefully know exactly what the baby's been exposed to. So the treatments to do first, as we said, anything that soothes the baby, holding them skin to skin, uh, taking care of them in a quiet area, uh, frequent on-demand feedings, rocking, swaddling, we encourage families to be present to learn their care and also to be able to comfort the babies and to hold them. And we encourage breastfeeding if that's appropriate. To have the baby comfortable, to be able to be consoled, we want uninterrupted sleep time. If the baby can't be comforted, they're not sleeping well, then that's the time that medication may be necessary. Morphine is often the first drug of choice, but methadone is also used, and we have some adjunct medications too. Sometimes phenobarbital, especially if the baby's been exposed to benzodiazepines in utero, and clonidine, which is non-opioid, and uh, really can ease the GI symptoms of vomiting and diarrhea. I want to emphasize that we still use all the comfort measures that we start out with, even if medication is necessary. Breastfeeding, we really stress. If mothers are in a treatment program and their urine drug screens are only positive for the medication they have been prescribed, such as methadone or Subutex, or if they're prescribed pain medications for other reasons, um, then we really encourage breastfeeding. Human milk is best, 
If mother is unable to provide breast milk, we have donor human milk available for any baby. And that's always with the permission of the family. If they do not want that, we use formulas that are low in lactose because those are, seem to be tolerated better by these babies. And we also use over-the-counter medications such, such as Myocon to help soothe the gut. Loveless Women's Hospital is baby friendly and lactation consultants are available to help support these mothers who can breastfeed. How long does it usually take for babies to go through an opioid withdrawal? It's very variable. It depends on what substances, for how long, at what dose the babies were exposed to the substances in utero, their mother's metabolism of the drug, the baby's metabolism of the drug, so that we we watch all these babies for a minimum of four days, and some of them do not go through enough withdrawal to need medication. The family is able to manage the symptoms. The babies can grow, they can thrive. But it may, even babies who uh, are able to go home, they may have some symptoms for weeks to months. Usually by six months, the symptoms are gone. So after discharge, what's important for these families? It's so important to have ongoing support for caring for the babies as they go through this, because as we said, withdrawal isn't finished when they're off medication and out of the hospital. So these families need to have ongoing support to care for the babies. Our Grace Navigator and Social Work and Case Management make lots of referrals, make appointments, so that there is this ongoing support for the family. It's very important that babies be followed by their pediatricians, that they have early intervention services, and above all, we have to remember that no one does this on their own. If someone watching this is pregnant or would like to have prenatal care at Loveless, how do they get a hold of us to make an appointment? You simply call 505-727-5000. That is our Grace phone line.